The sales budget is prepared first. Each of the other budgets depend upon the sales budget, which is derived from the sales forecast. It represents management's best estimate of sales revenue for the budget period. An inaccurate sales budget may adversely affect net income. Right, when it comes to the sales budget, you're simply going to multiply the expected unit sales volume for each product times the anticipated unit selling price. The sales budget is prepared by multiplying the expected unit sales volume by its selling price. Hayes Company expects sales volume to be 3,000 units in the first quarter with 500 unit increases in each succeeding quarter. The sales budget is for the year by the quarter based on a selling price of $60 per unit. They expect total sales to be $900,000, which is also reported on the budgeted income statement. The production budget shows the number of units of a product to produce to meet anticipated sales demand. Production requirements are determined from the following formula. Expected sales in units plus our desired ending finished goods in units minus the beginning finished goods units. This is the production budget for Hayes Company. In the first quarter, expected sales are 3,000 units. Hayes Company maintains an ending inventory equal to 20% of the next quarter's budgeted sales volume. The ending finished goods inventory for the first quarter is 700 units. If you take 20% and multiply that by the anticipated second quarter sales of 3,500 units, you will obtain 700. If we then subtract the beginning finished goods units of 600 units, again, if you take 20%, times the first quarter sales, you will arrive at 600 units. Okay. And if you subtract the 600 units from 3,700, you obtain a required production of 3,100 units. Let's take a look at the second quarter. In the second quarter, right, we're going to add 800 uh, units, which is simply 20% of 4,000. You're going to subtract 700. Again, the ending balance of Q1 becomes the beginning balance of Q2. Let's do a similar exercise on the third quarter. We're going to take 20% of the anticipated sales in the fourth quarter, and you're going to subtract the uh, beginning balance of the third quarter, which again is the ending balance of the second quarter. And you'll do a similar thing for the fourth quarter. Again, the ending balance in Q3 becomes the beginning balance in Q4. In this exercise, you will prepare production budgets for each quarter and in total. The solutions will be provided in a subsequent video. Keep in mind, the production budget provides the basis for the budgeted cost for each manufacturing cost element. This will be explained in the next discussions. The direct materials budget shows both the quantity and the cost of direct materials to be purchased. The first step towards computing the cost of direct material purchases is to compute the direct materials units required for production. We start with the units to be produced, and that's obtained from the production budget, and we multiply that by the direct material units per unit of unit produced. The next step is we're going to take the direct material units required for production, we're going to add our desired ending direct material units, and subtract our beginning direct material units to arrive at the direct material units to be purchased. The last step is we're simply going to take our direct material units to be purchased and multiply that by the cost per direct material unit to arrive at the cost of direct materials purchased. The desired ending inventory is again a key component in the budgeting process. For example, Inadequate inventories could result in a temporary shutdown of production. Hayes Company maintains an ending inventory of raw materials equal to 10% of the next quarter's production requirement. Let's prepare a direct material budget for Hayes Company. Hayes Company expects to produce 3,100 units in the first quarter. 
Each unit produced requires two pounds of raw materials. The units of direct materials required for production is 6,200 pounds. That is obtained by taking the 3,100 and multiplying by two. Next, we need to add the desired ending direct material units, which is 10% of the next quarter's production requirements, or 720. Next, we subtract the beginning direct material units of 620 pounds, which is 10% of this quarter's production requirement, or 6,200, to arrive at the direct material units to be purchased of 6,300 pounds. If we take the units to be purchased of 6,300 pounds and multiply that by the cost per direct material unit of $4, we'll arrive at $25,200, and that is the total cost of direct material purchases. Let's look at the other quarters. Start with the units to be produced, which is obtained from the production budget. Each unit produced requires two pounds of raw materials. The units of direct materials required for production is 7,200 pounds for Q2. Next, we need to add the desired ending materials units, which is 10% of the next quarter, or 820 units. The next thing we want to do is we want to subtract the beginning direct material units, which is the previous quarter's ending balance, to arrive at direct material purchases of 7,300. Lastly, we multiply the cost per pound of $4 to arrive at $29,200, and that represents our total cost of direct material purchases. Let's look at the third quarter. The units of direct materials required for production is 8,200 pounds. Next, we add the desired ending direct material units, which is 10% of the next quarter's production requirements. Then, we subtract the beginning direct material units which is the previous quarter's ending balance to arrive at a direct material purchases of 8,300. Lastly, we multiply by the cost per pound of $4 to arrive at $33,200, and that's the total cost of direct material purchases. Lastly, the units of direct materials required for production is 9,200 pounds for Q4. The next thing we want to do is add the desired ending direct material units of 1,020, which was given to us. And then we want to subtract the beginning direct material units, which is the previous quarter's balance, to arrive, to arrive at direct material purchases of 9,300. We then need to multiply by the cost per pound of $4 to arrive at $37,200. And that's the total cost of direct material purchases. In this exercise, you will prepare a direct materials purchases budget by month for the first quarter. The solutions will be provided in a subsequent slide.